it's fall. The leaves are falling. The weather's dropping. The sun's going down early. But that doesn't mean the fish are stopping, not going to bite anymore. They are going to actually bite more. Want to know how? Keep watching and let's find out. Hey guys, my name is BJ McVeigh. This is Bass Bro TV. Welcome back to this episode. I told you last time that you were watching, we're going to be talking about season patterns today. Um, and you know, what better time to start than now? Fall is here. Um, as I said earlier, you know, what are the bass doing? Like what, what is it that they're doing? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about all the seasonal patterns, but we're going to focus mainly on fall. Um, so if you ever have any uh, questions or comments, please feel free, drop them down in the comments down below. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Thanks guys. What are the bass doing? Uh, so first of all, there are, um, you have four seasons in a year. You have spring, uh, summer, fall, and winter. Now, in the springtime, that's when bass, you know, the we're talking early spring. So right when the water um, gets off the ice uh, and, and it starts melting away and the water is still super cold. We're talking mid 30s to um, low, uh, low 40s, depending on where you live. OK, so that would be your springtime. OK, right in the beginning, right after winter breaks, spring hits, bass are going to start changing. They're going to start coming from their winter hunts and they're going to they're going to be super hungry. They need to feed because they're going to be going into pre-spawn, which in pre-spawn, that's when they are really feeding. They're getting all their weight back so they can uh, bear eggs because um, they're going to be going through another long not eat uh, not eating for a while until their spawning's done okay so during the spring you're gonna have your your pre-spawn your spawn and then your post spawn okay that's all having to do with bass moving up into the shallows finding their beds making their beds getting their mates laying their eggs and then protecting their eggs from from other predators okay that's spawn. Uh, pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn pattern, okay? After that, you're going to have your summer patterns. That's when they move off of those shallow waters, and they come back into um, your secondary points, your cuts, your, your deeper ledges, your grass, um, your grass edges, um, anywhere where the oxygen level is good. Now, depending on where you live, um, bass will tend to go um, down lower um, in in water depth so you can find them anywhere between six to even 20 feet deep um, just depending again on where you're at um, but for the most part they're not hard to find either so in the springtime they go shallow in the summertime they're moving back off um, you know to their you know secondary points uh, main lake points they'll move back off to there even um, they're gonna they're gonna try to find any deeper water um, next to shallow cover. Um, if there's a lay down, for instance, where there's a tree, you know, that's, it's in about two, three feet of water, but the branches stretch out over about seven, eight foot of water, that's going to be a prime spot to try to catch a bass in early, um, early to midsummer. Okay. But again, you know, depending on how hot it gets and how hot the water gets, those bass might go down to those 10, 15, 20 foot depths range, okay? So we just finished with summer, right? So what are the bass doing? It's fall. This is what we're gonna focus mainly on here. Um, fall is one of the best times to catch bass and lots of them. So reason why is they're going to be moving back up into the shallows um, to feed. So once the water temperature reaches that uh, 50 to 60 degree range. Okay. Once it starts getting into that mid 55 range, it's hard to not catch a fish. If you go out and don't catch a fish, I get it. We all been there, but it most likely won't happen. If you throw the right things and just look for the right situations, um, you're going to have some success out there. It's one of my favorite times to go fishing. 
I remember that was the first time I banged my first bass over five pounds, okay? It was six pounds, 11 ounces. I caught it on a rattle trap, a lipless crankbait. One of these guys right here. This is a prime, prime bait to throw in the fall. Your lipless crankbaits, your, your regular crankbaits right here, these guys. This is a little, little baby brat, you know. Um, you can either throw, I usually either throw a crawl dad color or a, a shad color. The reason why I throw those two is because um, we'll get to that and actually we'll get that to the minute. We're going to keep talking about that though. But bass are going to, um, they're going to move up to the shallows. They, they need to feed for winter. Winter's coming. <laughs> Game of Thrones there. Winter's coming. Um, anyway, so they are going to feed because they have to have, uh, they're going to have a long winter of, of lean, not eating much, um, very, very lethargic, um, and they're going to drop way off out into um, steep ledges. They'll suspend um, and, and basically hold in groups and packs and schools. They will hold and sit there all winter long. So they need to eat and they need to eat a lot, okay? Bass, big bass in general, you'll find a lot of big bass are caught in the fall and in the spring. And there's a reason for that. So uh, yes, you can catch them all year round. No one's saying you can't go out in the summer and not catch a, a big bass, but um, you'll find that you'll catch a majority of your larger bass and better quality bass in the spring and in the fall because they need to eat. You know, studies have shown that bass that get over three pounds have to be aggressive. If they're not aggressive, they won't um, they won't grow. So it's very important to understand that you can catch big fish all year long. Okay, it's nice to know that those big bass have to be aggressive in order to get that size. So they're going to be eating, and they're going to eat a lot. So what what do you throw? Well, first of all, you're going to pay attention to a lot of things. You're going to pay attention in the shallows, back up in the co uh, coves and creek channels, especially the main lake creek channel. Um, you're going to find that bass are going to chase minnows, and they will school up, and they're going to chase minnows up into the shallow coves. Um, you need to pay attention for those areas. Uh, when you go out and look at those areas, you'll soon find out that um, – there's bass busting the surface left and right. So what I like to throw is anything that resembles a minnow, okay? So I'm gonna throw, you know, spinner bait. Uh, I'm gonna throw, again, the crank baits. I'm gonna throw um, lipless crank baits, rattle traps. I'm gonna throw um, anything that, I'll throw a weightless zoom fluke. I'll throw a weightless Cinco, um, Texas rig, not wacky. Uh, anything that can resemble a, a minnow, whether it being a dying minnow or just a full-on swimming around in the wrong uh, side of the neighborhood kind of minnow, okay? I'm going to throw anything that re resembles bait fish. Now, keep in mind when you're out there, make sure you pay attention to your surroundings and what's going on in the water. It's very crucial. Um, I saw uh, shad busting the surface once. I paid attention to how long they were. I paid attention to their colors. Um, they were jumping out. They were a very iridescent silverish color, but they were uh, about two and a half to three inches long. That's about how long they were. So I would find myself, um, get out here, when I went, So, I would get my, uh, pull up my baits here. Anything two and a half, three inches long. So I'll throw something like this. Like I said, it was very iridescent. It even had this black dot on its gill. It was very, uh, it was about two to three inches long. This is a two and a half inch uh, Strike King. 2.5 crankbait, okay? It's gonna dive down roughly. Um, 
it's gonna dive down roughly five. And look, here's Oreo again. Or to say hi, everybody. But uh, it's gonna dive down roughly uh, three to five feet, okay? This guy here, I throw him too. This is a big brat. He dives down to about six foot. Uh, but again, he matches exactly what I saw jumping out on the water, okay? These are things I pay attention to. So when I go out, I know exactly what they're eating and I can increase my chances of getting bit. So um, another thing that people don't understand, they think that all they're gonna throw is spinner baits, crank baits and whatnot. But here's the thing, what people tend to seem to forget, and it's one of my favorite baits to throw, and I will have this tied on all fall until the water um, gets below uh, 50 degrees. Then I no longer will throw it, okay? But until then, I'm consistently going to throw this bait. And let me explain why. So, first off, it is a jig and pig, this color specifically. Green pumpkin, little orange on there. And you can see here is the Power Chunk trailer. This is one of my favorite ones. The reason why I'm throwing this, okay? Put myself around here. All right, the reason why I'm throwing this is because crawdads, in the winter time, they do hibernate. They go and move away, okay? But until then, and that, that's when the water reaches about 45 degrees, okay? When the water is 45 degrees, they're hibernated. They're gone, okay? Now, until then, though, they are consistently moving around looking for the warmest water on the lake, they're moving, okay? So if the crawdad are moving, they're migrating all together, you need to understand that bass are going to eat them. They're going to follow them, they're going to hunt them, they're going to eat them. There was another study showing that um, they had a tank, a big tank, filled it with minnows and crawdads. Uh, majority of the bass went after crawdads because they were an easy meal. They couldn't swim away and dart as fast as minnows. So their main choice of food was the crawdad. Now, why this color specifically? Okay, because when the water starts cooling off, I'm going to post a picture here of a crawdad in the, in the fall. Um, this is exactly what a crawdad looks like in the fall. Again, pay attention to what happens to your, um, you, you know, your food source, what happens to their food source. This is what they see. The idea is to be as natural as possible. So this is exactly what a crawdad looks like in the wintertime. You'll see, based off this picture, that there is some, um, almost like a motor oil looking color to the dang thing. It's got that dark green coming in. And because the water cools off, and when it cools off, its skin uh, or shell its outer shell is actually going to change color. When the warmer the water, the more orange and reddish they get, um, almost like uh, the color of this crawdad, right, or this uh, rattle trap right here. They're very colored like this, okay? So the reason why I throw, um, I like to throw this color as well in the fall is because they're still transitioning from this color back to this color, okay? So I'll throw crawdad colored um, crankbaits and minnow colored, any shiner color, bluegill color, whatever it is that they're foraging on in your waters, okay? Um, but this is a prime big bass bait to throw. And the reason why I throw it with this little orange in it, as well as the green on top, is because again, they're transitioning from this color to this color, okay? It is important important to try to match it as much as possible. But I'll throw this around any docks, any type of ambush points where uh, I feel that a bass would be ambushing minnows or crayfish or anything of that nature. So I'll throw it in stumps and bushes and trees um, and docks, boat docks, regular docks. Uh, I'm going to throw that thing in there as well as possible. Um, so for instance, the other day I was out, I threw this guy and I threw it five or six times. 
um, around this boat dock and I didn't get any bites. And then I switched and I threw this guy and on the first cast, I caught one. So it's just make sure again, I think I, uh, I spoke about this um, in one of my other videos way back, um, fish all three bites, all three. You got your territorial, your hunger, and your reaction bite. This is a reaction bait, okay? It is also a hunger bait, but it's also a reaction bait. Unless I drop this thing in right in front of a bass's mouth and he's hungry, he's probably not gonna bite it. He's not gonna go out of his way to go chase this thing down, especially a minnow. Why? Just like I said earlier, they did a study and showed that the bait fish are harder to catch than crayfish. So I switched and tried this. Obviously it just fell down, slow fall down, and he picked it up immediately, okay? I cast into the spinner bait in the exact same spot. He didn't bite it then because the spinner bait ran away just like a normal bait fish. This crawfish fell right in front of his face. He picked it up on the way out because again, it's an easy meal. So don't forget again to do that, all right? Um, so recap, fall, one of the best times to fish. What are you gonna look for? This is what you're gonna look for. You're gonna look for um, flats, any type of flat where you got five, six, seven feet of, of water that drops off next to any ledge, okay? They're gonna hold up on those flats and then they're gonna move off down to those ledges when the water cools off for the winter, okay? So look for those spots. They can be on the main lake, they can be up in the channels. Generally, I like to go all the way up in the channels, all the way up to the flat creek. Old creek beds are phenomenal places to fish as long as there's some deep channels next door to them. Any type of structured banks next to deep water, fantastic spot. Choose that. Boat docks, again, can't stress it enough. They hold fish all year long, okay? Especially if they're next to deep water. So if you haven't seen the, uh, the key element there, any type of shallow water, flats, um, structure, grass structures um, that are next to deep water are gonna be your prime spots to increase your chances to catch fish, okay? So thank you guys for watching again. Check out the video when I went out here. I did catch some fish, um, so check it out. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on Bass Bro TV. I'll catch you later. Oh yes, and don't forget, if you haven't yet, like, subscribe, and also, Leave a comment down below. Tell us what, what bait you like to throw in the fall. All right, guys. We'll see you.